I was glad when they said unto me, let us go up unto the house of the Lord. Well, I'm glad when they said to me, come to our preacher's lectureship and give a lesson. That is a wonderful, wonderful honor. All those who have undertaken such great endeavor to spread the glad tidings of good news unto all people possible. I had to be a part of everyone here, Kevin I've known for years, for his sound and good and wonderful preaching. And I know those who are with him are proclaiming the same message of love. The love that keeps God's commandments. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I'm glad to be a part, Bob, this morning in delivering these messages. Church losing its identity, yes it is. Sad when you hear of all the things that's taking place in many congregations of the Lord's Church today, like the adding of women in their role of leadership, changing uh, the communion to Saturday night, doing many things, removing themselves from what is called a sound doctrine. I just said in chapter 2, 7 and 8, But show thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech. They of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil to say of you. We certainly want to remain sound to the doctrine, because only if we remain sound in the doctrine will God accept us. Truth of God versus the world. The world has a lot to offer according to John in Second John 2.15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof. But only he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. God's truth versus what the world has to offer. Matthew seven twenty one. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And Jesus said, I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I would like him to a wise man that built his house upon the rock. When the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon it, it fell not. Why? It was founded upon that rock, the solid truth of God. But whosoever heareth these things of mine, and doeth them not, I would like him to a foolish man that built his house upon the sand. When the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon it, it fell, and great was the fall of it, because it had no foundation before the God of heaven. 1 Corinthians 3.11, No other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. The truth of God opposes uh, most religions in the world today. That would seem strange uh, to the ears of man. But in 2 Corinthians uh, we learn in 11, No marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Most religion today, most of it, belongs to Satan. It is in Satan's camp, not in the Lord's camp. Certainly, the Lord upholds only one thing, and that is true. He stands in opposition to all who do not accept and obey the truth. True. It is God's Word. John 17:17. 17, 17, Sanctify through truth. Jesus said, Thy Word is true. Truth tells us the origin of God. Genesis 1:1. 1, 1, In the beginning, God. Truth tells us our obligation. Ecclesiastes 12. 12, My son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. Much study is a weariness to the flesh. But fear God and keep His commandments, this is the whole duty of man. Truth uh, tells us about the end of the road. 
Hebrews 9, 27, it's appointed that the man wants to die, and after this the judgment. Please see, I said, Teens 12, 7, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return to the God who gave it. In Matthew 25, 46, Jesus said, These shall go away into everlasting punishment, and the righteous into life eternal. Truth tells us about these things. It creates faith for us. In John 20, 30 and 31, many of the signs to live to Jesus in the presence of His disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you might have life through His name. It supports life in which to walk by. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Truth furnishes us unto every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. God's great truth supplies all of our needs. It supplies the message that we need. It supplies the salvation that we must have. Certainly, we will not face in the day of judgment we will not face opinion, we will not face theory, we will not face make-believe, we will not face the creeds and doctrine of men or the lusts of the flesh. We're going to meet the Word of God. You know, it's the only thing we'll ever meet after death. In the day of judgment is the Word of His truth. That's why James said we need to receive it with meekness, those engrafted words. It is the important thing in life. You know, these are not the basis of judgment, of theory, and opinion, theory, and make-believe, and doctrines and creeds of men. Not the basis of judgment. Truth is. Remember the voice from old in Psalms 96 and verse 13? He is going to judge the world in righteousness and his people with the truth. He's going to judge the world, what? In righteousness. Yet in Romans 1, 16 and 17, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, it's the power of God unto salvation to the one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For within is the righteousness of God revealed. He's going to judge the world by the things contained in the book, the truth. That is the only standard of judgment. That's what Jesus said in John 12, 48, He that rejected me and received of my word have one to judge him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Judgment on that day is important. And Jesus said in John 8, 45, If I tell you the truth, why don't you believe me? That's what he has told us, that we're going to be judged by the Father's word. You know, when people believe things different from what Jesus taught, they're not believing the truth. They're not believing the very thing that will stand and condemn them in the day of judgment. Punishment comes only by the way of truth. Punishment comes by truth. Punishment comes all through sin. But purification is the only thing that will come by the way of truth. That's what 1 Peter 1.22 says, Seeing you have purified your souls, how? In obeying the truth. We can't obey anything else and ever expect to be free. You know, truth is not what we think it is. It's not what we make it. It is simply God and His Word. Romans 3 and verse 4, Let God be true, and every man a liar, that thou mightest be justified by thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. His Word and nothing else. Sanctify them through truth, Father, thy word is truth. We need it to read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, practice it to be holy, because it is the standard of judgment. Why do we want to read it? Because we're able to see that we're all lost and we need salvation. Why do we need to search it? We need to search it in order to know how and in what way we can obey God. We need to study it in order to know how to work and labor and toil for God in this life and fulfill His God-given commission to us. Certainly, the Jews of old were religious. No question about that. 
They are so religious that a lot of times when they build their great houses and their homes and their entertainment centers, that they left one room uncompleted. Why? To remind them that nothing was permanent here. They were moving on. But yet those same Jews, in John 5, 39, Jesus said, Search the Scripture. For in you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify of me. Why search the Scripture? Search it because you've got eternal life, but only in your own thinking, your own mind. You don't have eternal life. By God's standard, the truth. If you would have searched the Scripture, you would have found eternal life was only in your thinking. It wasn't the truth because you had not obeyed the truth and lived the truth. And that's what's important to eternal life. In Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth and sell it not. It's in opposition to the world and worldly things and doctrine of men and creeds of men and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes of pride of life. Why buy the truth and sell it not? Because we're going to have to pay a price for the truth. It's something that you, in other words, got to live up to. You've got to pay the price. Jesus said, deny ourselves, take up our cross, follow Him. In each one of those, it reveals there is a price to pay. Why buy it and sell it not? Because it stands in contrast to error. Superwealthy, it is higher than opinion and theory. Truth may be limited and increasing, but truth is always there and it's always the same. By the truth. Are you prepared to pay the price for the truth? Isn't anything worthwhile, costly today? Everything that is guaranteed for a long period of time or is good has a price that we have to pay for it. Is there anything more valuable than truth? Truth is often quite expensive. You know, Walter Reed, a young army doctor, gave his life to find the cure and carrier of yellow fever. The price was high. Think of the millions of dollars and painstaking hours that it went into research to find a cure for all the major diseases today like cancer, heart trouble, and all the other things. Truth is quite expensive. The disciples of Jesus left their homes, their jobs behind in order to follow Him. And in Mark 10 and verse 28, Peter said, Why, Lord, we have forsaken all and followed Thee. What are we going to have there for? Well, Jesus simply said, He that has left father, mother, son, daughter, wife, children for my name's sake and Luke adds the gospel shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit eternal life. Truth is worth the price that we have to pay for it. We may have to leave our families. We may have to separate our lives from uh, evil association uh, that we've had in the past. But we have to pay the price for truth. Why shall it not? Some said, buy it and don't sell it. Why sell it not? Nothing else is equal of value to the truth. Matthew 20, 30, 25, 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Listen, but my word shall not pass away. Everything else is going to pass away. The earth and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth and the works of the air shall be burned up. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Truth endures. And it is the only thing that will endure. If we endure, it will be because we stand with, for, and are obedient to the truth. Else we will not survive. The value of truth? Well, in medicine, the physician uh, cannot successfully treat the ailment until he knows the truth. He has to find the truth in order to be able to diagnose the case in the right way. In law today... All courts proceed on the basis of the witnesses telling the truth. The jury decides on the basis of what is true, and life is held in the balance. In business, all business depends uh, upon truth. That is, uh, from the merchandise to the distributor to the consumer, 
failure to maintain truth in any of these areas means a business can fail in society. Why? We really need to know the truth. The person in whom we can place confidence in is wonderful. I want my neighbor to tell the truth. I like to live with brethren that speak the truth. Certainly, truth is outstanding. In marriage, the vows that are taken I do before God. Promise to take this woman or man to be my lawful companion for all of life, until the end of life, until the, the death of one of them. Sacred vows that we take are made before God and witness, and God holds us responsible. The writer of old said, When thou vowest to vow to God, defer not to pay it, because he hath no pleasure in fools. We have to pay our vows. Marriage cannot be successful where either party fails to keep the vows that they have made. Shakespeare said, be true to all, but most of all, be true to thyself. It must follow as the night follows the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Nothing is sadder than to behold one who is untrue to himself and to his eternal state. The most important application in religion is, is it true? Is it built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ and the words that He spoke? Remember, it came by Christ. John 1, 17, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Christ. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Well, how can you say, Lord, that you are the truth and the embodiment of the truth? Because in John 12, He said, The Father gave me a commandment of what I should speak and what I should say, and I know that His commandment is life everlasting. I can of myself do nothing but accept what the Father said. I live by the Father's Word. Matthew 4, 4, man doesn't live by every word, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's the only way man really lives. That's the way he's going to survive. And Jesus was the embodiment of truth. He never spoke a principle. He never gave a command that his Father did not authorize. Therefore, he could say, I am the truth. In John 8, 32, he said, you show the truth, the truth will make you free. Peter said, you can purify your souls in obeying the truth. So truth stands in opposition to all the world, to all the worldly religions, to all the creeds and doctrine of men, to all the lust of the, the, lust of the eyes and the pride of life. The world, the truth of God is in opposition to all of these things. In the book of Colossians, near the end it says, Touch not, taste not, handle not, going to perish with the using, after the doctrine and commandments of men. I want you to take just a brief moment to think about that in the light of truth. What was the Lord saying? Don't touch it. Don't taste it. Don't handle it. Why do you touch something? When you touch something, it feels bad or it feels good and wonderful. The Lord said if you touch false doctrine, false claims, you're going to find out that the touch is wonderful. Why? Satan has streamlined it. He's made it feel good and fit our feelings when we touch it. We don't want to let it go. Taste not. Why did he say taste not? Because what we taste, our taste buds tell us whether we like it or we don't. It depends upon our feelings. If we taste something and we like it, we love it, we want to consume it, we want to eat it every day of our lives. Don't do it. Don't even taste false doctrine. If they're coming to you and bring out this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. Because if we taste false doctrine, the devil has streamlined it. And when we taste it, we'll want it and more of it. And we'll want to be a part of it. Handle not. Touch, taste, and handle not. Why not handle it? Because when you handle false doctrine, 
You don't want to let it go. Why? It gives you what you want. It makes you happy. Gives you a thrill. Gives you a joy. That's why the Lord said, don't touch it, don't taste it, don't handle it. If you do, you're going to be deceived by it. But thank God that we have the truth. We can know the truth. Jesus is the embodiment of truth. What did He say? John 8, if you don't believe Me, you're going to die in your sins and where I go, you can't go. If we believe Jesus, Luke 13, 3, He says, I tell you today, except you repent, you'll likewise perish. It's either repent or perish. Who said that? Jesus. Jesus is the embodiment of truth. That is the truth. In Matthew 10, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you. You deny me, I'll deny you. That's truth because Jesus said it was. It came from the Father. He that believeth in his baptized shall be saved. That's true. By that baptism you'll put me on, Galatia 3. That baptism is an operation of God, a faith executed, Colossians 2.12. It's the very thing, 1 Peter 3.21, that saves us. Now notice that Jesus is the embodiment of truth in opposition to all other things. If it verses all other things, then certainly to be a part of that truth, we have to believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. And yet, doctrine of men and teaching of men and ministers of righteousness who is of Satan come along and say, well, it's a matter of faith. It's a matter of faith. Well, it is. Hebrews 11, 6, without faith it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that He is, and is He is rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. But watch it. What is belief? It means we can accept. What is repentance? It's faith turning. What is confession? That's faith speaking. What is baptism? That's faith obeying. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. The Lord's truth is plain, simple, because God would have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. It's the only thing that will. We hope today that it will save you. It will put your life on the road that leads to eternal life. While together we stand and sing, if you're subject, won't you come?